Hey everybody, Bob Gager from Adobe here with this week's installment of Ask Bob, where you can get your Photoshop Elements questions answered. Today's question is from Raquel Jerry. Raquel says, I have a color photo, however I'm wanting to make it black and white, then add color enhancements just to certain parts of the picture. How do I go about doing this? Well, Raquel, that's actually a very commonly asked for technique, and it's really easy to accomplish in Photoshop Elements. So I'm going to start over here in my Elements Organizer. I'm using Elements 10, but uh, actually what I'm going to show off today is supported all the way back to Photoshop Elements 7. Um, but first we need to find a picture that we want to mess with. So let's kind of change the scale down so we can see lots of pictures. And I'm going to use the search bar here in the top left corner of the Elements Organizer to find a photo. And I happen to know I've got a photo of a dog whose name is Buddy, which I've previously tagged. And so I'll just type in Buddy in the search bar, and all of my photos are filtered down to just the shots of Buddy the Wonder Dog here. And I'm going to go select one. It's got some nice color to it, and open it up for editing. So I select it, and then right-click, and select Edit with Photoshop Elements Editor. Uh, that'll open it up here in the Elements Editing environment. Uh, I'm going to close my Project Bin, this section down along the bottom that shows my open files, uh, to get a little more room for editing. So I do that by just hovering my mouse over the word Project Bin here, a quick double click, and that'll collapse down. If you need to get it back open, double click, open, double click, close. Real nice. But now I've got the focus here on this picture of Buddy the Wonder Dog. And one of the things that we added in Photoshop Elements 7, uh, and of course it's in all versions since then, is something that we call the Smart Brush. And what the Smart Brush does is allow you to paint on any number of effects to just part of your photo. And luckily enough, black and white is one of the effects that we added. So I'm going to select the Smart Brush. Uh, up here in this little pull down in the Tool Option bar is the various types of effects that I can paint on. Uh, I'm going to just quickly do a show all, and you can see we've just got bunches and bunches of effects. But to make it easy for you, uh, we have organized them nicely, and there's a section called black and white. So I'm going to select black and white, uh, I'm going to scroll through the list, and there's lots of different black and white effects. I'm just going to pick one. I'll start with cold tone black and white, and just double click that effect to uh, dismiss that pull down. And now, with my Smart Brush selected, I just start dragging over the image. And I'll go kind of slow so you can see what's happening. But as I drag the Smart Brush across my image, it's able to detect edges of things. So it'll sort of detect the edge of this big blue ball. As I drag down across the ball, it'll find the edges of Buddy's nose, around his chin and his mouth. Uh, if I drag over the yellow ball, it'll get underneath his chin. Uh, and down his neck, uh, let go of my mouse, come over here to the left side where we've got some more of the yellow ball and just start clicking and dragging again. And so you can see real quickly, everywhere I drag, the smart brush finds the edges of the objects I drag over, colors them black and white, uh, but leaves Buddy's face uh, in color uh, because that's the effect that I want. Uh, I can click off onto my background layer, you notice over here in the layers panel, um, the Smart Brush added a new layer, which is this cold tone, black and white. Uh, I can turn that off, right? So we did some non-destructive editing, which is really cool. I can always get back to the original. I can turn that layer on and off to see the black and white effect or even go back to the full color effect. If I select that layer with my Smart Brush tool selected, you can see the selection around Buddy's head uh, is remade automatically for me. And this is really cool. I can actually go up to this pull down. I'll move it out of the way so we can kind of see what's going on. And I can experiment with different effects. If I don't like the cold tone black and white, I could click on, say, the blue filter. And you can see it gives a different black and white uh, technique. Uh, I could choose a green filter. It looks a little bit different. We've got some other things such as color fade horizontal. If I click on that, you can see the left side is colored and it fades to black and white for the right. Color fade vertical, same thing but in a vertical direction. Or colorful center, where we've still got some color right behind Buddy's head, but around the edges of my image are black and white. Uh, so that's really cool. Uh, I'll temporarily jump over to some other things, uh, just so you can see what's going on with the Smart Brush tool. Uh, color is a whole section where we've got lots of colors. 
uh, say if I wanted everything green behind Buddy or pink uh, or blue or hot pink, uh, all kinds of different capabilities are right there. If I want some textures, it's kind of fun, I can switch to the textures category and uh, maybe put some checkers behind Buddy or maybe put a net behind him, makes it look like he's inside a cage looking out at the fun balls or maybe some broken glass in case he's uh, jumped through the stained glass window and trying to get to the balls. So lots of fun things we can do with a smart brush. I'll switch back to black and white since that's what you asked about and uh, back to that cold tone. Uh, so a real simple uh, way. Uh, double click again on my background to get rid of the selection. Uh, and as simple as that, I've created the black and white effect you were asking about. Now, a little more advanced technique. You'll notice that uh, this layer that was created with the Smart Brush tool has what we call a layer mask. This little thing right here where we can kind of see a black shape that looks kind of like Buddy's head. Uh, what we can do is go in and fine tune exactly where the effect is applied and where it's not applied by editing that layer mask. And the way we do that is with our brush tool. And you may notice um, under Buddy's chin here, the smart brush didn't do a perfect job. Let me zoom in a little bit so we can see what's going on there. I'll grab uh, my zoom tool and a couple clicks. You can actually see if we get in close enough, we can see where that yellow ball is showing through. Again, if I turn off that layer, right, there's the colored ball behind Buddy. If I turn it back on, you can see where the black and white effect is applied, but it kind of missed it right here along his furry chin. Uh, so if I select this layer mask, grab my brush tool, and make sure my foreground color is set to white. If I paint on my layer mask with the brush tool, I can actually fine tune exactly where that effect is applied. So you can see as I paint over here, I can get rid of some of that yellow and really get a nice crisp edge uh, from where the effect is applied and where the effect is not applied. I can scroll down a little bit and get rid of some more yellow here. Uh, so that's a nice way to kind of fine tune the effect. If I make a mistake and I accidentally paint somewhere I shouldn't have and suddenly Buddy's chin is turning black and white, I can just swap my foreground and background colors. So bring black to the front as my foreground color, paint back where I had painted white and it brings the color right back. So I don't have to worry about making a mistake. I can very easily correct where I've uh, painted a little extra. So again, back to my zoom tool. Up in the options bar, we've got a fit screen button that very quickly resizes the image back so I can see everything. So there's the technique. Uh, hope that helps. Give it a try. It's a lot of fun. Thanks.